Hello, and welcome to The Dungeon. I'm your host, Rob. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Death Domain Cleric. Now, technically, this one's not really a player character option, but I've seen tons of people use it as one. Uh, it comes from the Dungeon Master's Guide. And personally, I think it's not really particularly overpowered or anything else, so I don't have a problem with people using it. And I do kind of like, you know, the idea of Death Domain. It doesn't have to be evil. I, I don't know why people always say it is. Now, don't be wrong. A lot of it probably is. But there's a lot of, like, you know, religions and ideas that just consider death part of the natural cycle of life, right? So, you know, it doesn't have to be evil just because you're a death domain cleric, right? Uh, you know, somebody has to bury all those bodies and stuff. So, you know. Either way, though, I think it's a pretty decent domain. I don't think it's necessarily like the best, but it's certainly not the worst, that's for sure. And I think it's, you know, pretty flavorful and could be a lot of fun. It could be a lot of fun, especially in an evil campaign, of course. Not saying you can't be an evil death domain cleric. Anyways, uh, I also want to apologize. I meant to have a video out two or three days ago. I was working on my multi-classing uh, tier list video, but I really started to realize, um, a while back when I first started my channel, I bought like the Vegas Pro Suite uh, set for like editing stuff. But I'm a complete novice and I'd never done any of it before. So I kind of screwed around with it, tried to do a couple of videos. It was really confusing and I wasn't very good at it. However, along with that suite came with a program called Fast Cut, which was incredibly easy to use. And that's what I've been using mostly ever since, right? Probably 95% of my videos have been done with Fast Cut. However, I'm starting to really realize the limitations of Fast Cut and why Vegas is probably where I want to use in the future. But I need to, um, especially if I want to make like better quality videos with like more graphics and stuff, and I really need to like just take some time on my days off and figure out how to really do it and just stop making excuses. If I want to do this in any kind of, you know, better capacity and grow my channel, I probably need to get serious about it at some point, you know? So, that's what I need, I'm gonna need to do. So this could be my last Fast Cut video for a while, who knows? Either way though, um, I wanted to at least get a video out, even if it's not the one I was hoping to do originally, and I'm already a couple of days like overdue essentially, so what the heck, here we go. Anyways, Death Domain Cleric. So, we'll start with the domain spell list like I usually do. I think the spell list is fairly weak overall, but there are a few really, really excellent spells. So, you know, it's not a complete loss. Level one, we're gonna get False Life and Ray of Sickness. Um, you know, I think those spells are both okay, but I don't consider them great. Level three, though, we can get Blindness, Deafness. Nice spell, I mean, it's already on the cleric spell list, but the fact that it's a debuff that doesn't use concentration can be very, very handy. So, you know, not not bad. And we get Ray of Enfeeblement. Um, level five, Animate Dead and Vampire Touch. Uh, Vampire Touch, I mean, it can heal, but you're already cleric. It's not that it's a bad spell. It can like damage and heal. The two for one trade is, is kind of nice sometimes. So I feel like Vampire Touch is an okay spell. Anime Dead is a spell I absolutely love though. I love using things like skeletons or zombies to, you know, go down the hallway in front of the party and spot any traps by, you know, falling into them or setting them off. Better them than me, right? Um, it's a nice way to bolster your party's capacity in like fights and stuff. You just got a bunch of extra skeletons that can all attack and shoot stuff with bows or whatever, right? Very great spell. I like it a lot. Uh, level seven, we get Blight and Death Ward. I mean, Blight is okay damage, but I don't think it's phenomenal. Um, a lot of stuff that I might want to use it on ends up either being like sometimes resistant or even immune to necrotic damage. So that's unfortunate as well. But Death Ward is a spell I really like. Again, it's already on the Cleric spell list, but you know, not having to prepare it is nice. Um, 
I feel like though that if I'm the kind of person that's going to take Death Ward, I was probably going to prepare it anyway. So this is at least a decent option where now I don't have to prepare it. I can dig a little deeper into those spells, right? So I think that's okay. Death Ward's a great buff. Last 24 hours, no concentration. You know, or is it eight hours? Either way, long duration, no concentration. Uh, level nine, we're going to get Anti-Life Shell and Cloud Kill. And both these spells are actually pretty decent as well. Cloud Kill has a lot of potential, especially if you can like cast it in a confined area and keep people locked down in that area. Um, say maybe you have a wizard in your party who wants to cast Wall of Force, and you combine that with Cloud Kill. Very effective. Um, so that's it for your domain spells. Like I said, I feel like overall it's not the best list out there, but I do like Blindness, Deafness, and I really like Anime Dead a lot. So those are the ones I really, really like. But some of the others are, are okay too. Anti-Life Shell, Cloud Kill, you know, Death Ward. It's just unfortunate that a bunch of those were already on the Cleric Spell list. Anyways, bonus proficiency. So right at level one, when you choose this domain, you're going to get proficiency with martial weapons. So basically you can use any weapon you want. Kind of nice. Also at first level, we get the Reaper ability. Uh, you learn one necromantic cantrip of his or her choice from any spell list. When the cleric casts a necromancy cantrip that normally targets only one creature, the spell can instead target two creatures within range and within five feet of each other. This is really nice with something like Toll the Dead, which is a necromancy cantrip. Um, it doesn't have to be the one you get either. It's just any necromancy. So you get to choose one from any spell school, right? And then any necromantic cantrip, that one plus any other ones you might have had, uh, you can use this ability. And I do like it quite a bit because a lot of times I'm not necessarily looking to use a lot of, uh, like let's say I have a spell I'm concentrating on, right? And that's like the big thing I'm trying to do. But then once I'm concentrating on that spell, I might want a consistent source of like damage or something else I can cast that isn't requiring me to use concentration. And usually that ends up being things like either hitting somebody with a weapon or using a damaging cantrip. And cantrips, I mean, they definitely have points where they're pretty competitive here and there. But overall, the damage just isn't that good compared to what other people are doing, right? But the fact that I could hit two targets gives me just way more value. Now, obviously, the, that can't always be done. Sometimes you don't have a second target within five feet of your original target, right? But a lot of times you can and then you just get double the value. So to me, that's actually a really, really nice ability, especially for a first level ability. It's one that I think is quite iconic as well. It fits the class, and really when I think of Death Domain Cleric, that's the ability I'm usually thinking of. Anyways, level two, Channel Divinity, Touch of Death. Starting at the second level, the cleric can use Channel Divinity to destroy another creature's life force by touch. When the cleric hits a creature with a melee attack, the cleric can use Channel Divinity to deal extra necrotic damage to the target. The damage equals 5 plus twice his or her cleric level. So, I mean, that can be a decent chunk of damage, especially, you know, scales very nicely, twice your cleric level, right? Uh, not as good at lower levels, but it actually is one that gains value as you go on, and that's usually pretty rare. So, I kind of like this ability as well. Again, it is necrotic damage. Um, that's usually not one of the most resisted, but a lot of undead tend to be immune to necrotic, so keep that in mind. But still, overall, not too bad. Level 6, Inescapable Destruction. Starting 6th level, the cleric's ability to channel negative energy becomes more potent. Necrotic damage dealt by the character's cleric spells and channel divinity ignores resistance to necrotic damage. So this is very nice. Like I said, a lot of things that are, um, you know, more... Uh, resistant to necrotic damage, not necessarily resistant. A lot of stuff is just straight up immune. But, you know, the fact that you can ignore uh, resistance is actually really nice. It doesn't help you against immune targets. But again, this will allow you to get more value out of things like that cantrip or out of your channel divinity. So I like that you have a built-in ability that helps you to bypass that. Uh, level 8, Divine Strike. At 8th level, the cleric gains the ability to infuse his or her weapon strikes with necrotic energy. Once on each of the cleric's turns, when he or she hits a creature with a weapon attack, the cleric can cause the attack to deal an extra 1 die 8 necrotic damage 
when the cleric hits 14th level, the extra damage increases to 2 die 8. So, once again, um, most clerics either get potent cantrips or you get divine strike. I actually wish that you had the potent cantrip ability, though, with the death domain. Because you already have an ability that allows you to hit two people with your necrotic cantrips. So if I want to cast more cantrips, I'd rather have my wisdom bonus getting added to the cantrip damage rather than getting extra damage on my melee attacks. It really feels like kind of like the Tempest Domain, how some of their abilities used uh, lightning damage and some use like uh, thunder damage and stuff. I really wish they would have just picked one and gone with it, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. Um, improved Reaper. Starting at 17th level, when the character casts a necromancy spell of 1st through 5th level, the target's only one creature. The spell can instead target two creatures within range and within 5 feet of each other. If the spell consumes its material components, the cleric must provide them for each target. So this does allow you to like blight two targets at once, for example. Um, you know, I guess double the value there. I said I'm not the biggest fan of blight, but... Uh, if you're going to play one guy, getting two guys for one is probably a better deal. Um, overall, I don't know that I, I'd use that as much as the cantrip, which I got at level one. But there might be circumstances where you might want to use it. So, again, not a bad ability per se. It does come online very late. But I'm kind of okay with that. It, it is only first to fifth level spells as well. Um... It's all right. Overall, I think that the Death Domain Cleric has some really nice abilities, especially early on. I feel like your level one ability is quite good, especially if you wanted to cast a lot of cantrips. Uh, I think that your Channel Divinity is pretty decent, especially if you wanted to uh, use your touch attacks on stuff. So I think that with something, let's say a multi-class of maybe a familiar and having the familiar deliver touch attacks, that can be pretty decent, although I don't know if we can use your channel divinity per se, because it's not technically a spell. But either way, I think that there's some potential there. And I think that, you know, if you want to pick up better weapon proficiencies, that can be a way to go. I wish they had the armor instead. I usually find that the more attractive option. If I wanted to dip like one or two levels of cleric to get armor, I'd rather do that than to get the weapons usually. But either way, I think that it's an interesting option. I think that it has some nice flavor to it. And I feel that some of the abilities really fit the theme of the class, even if they're not necessarily particularly strong. But I feel like some of the early abilities are quite good. I like the fact that I can hit like two things with my cantrips at low level, you know? Because I don't have a lot of spell slots and I might be casting a lot of cantrips. And Toll of Dead hits fairly hard, you know? If the thing's already taken damage, which isn't that unlikely, uh, you're doing D12s, uh, that's a lot of damage for a cantrip. Um, like I said, it would have been even better if you'd gotten the potent cantrip ability, even if you could only apply it to one of the targets, right? Like, even if they said, you know, if combined with your, um, what's it called, Reaper? With your, yes, your Reaper ability, only one of the targets takes the extra bonus damage from your Wisdom. I would have been fine with that. If both did, even better though, you know, so whatever. Um, but either way, I think it's pretty decent as a subclass. I have no problem with players playing a subclass, honestly. It's not like it's, I think, particularly overpowered, but I think it's interesting. I think the abilities fit the theme. And I do think that some of the abilities are very iconic and interesting. And, you know, that makes me kind of want to play it. I'd much rather play a class where there's some cool themes and ideas than one that just feels like really bland and there's nothing really interesting about it, you know? Uh, sorry, Knowledge Domain. I shouldn't say that. I'm sure Knowledge Domain is somebody's favorite. It's just not mine. But I don't like attacking specific subclasses usually because every subclass has probably got a favorite player out there somewhere that likes it, you know? And, you know, maybe it's just not for me. That's fine. I understand that. Death Domain might be for me, though. I kind of like the feel of it. Anyways, that's everything. Uh, thank you for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and most importantly, leave me your comments in the comment section. 
Um, I'd love to hear your experiences playing Death Domain Clerics, or if you have one in your campaign. Uh, maybe you don't like the idea of them being played by players. I think that's fine too, right? I like that it's an option, and people can make up their own mind with it, right? I think including that, I'm going to do like the Oathbreaker Paladin probably in my next video as well. So then we'll have like, you know both the Dungeon Master Guide ones out of the way. And I like the options that those things are out there. I think they can be very flavorful. But, you know, if you don't want to have them in your campaign, you don't have to either, right? That's the nice thing about optional subclasses. But anyways, that's everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.